In the summer of August 6, 1945, Sutomu Yamaguchi was on a three-month-long work trip with his colleagues, designing a new oil tanker. The work was arduous, but the last day of work has finally come. It was time for Yamaguchi to head home where his wife Hisako and his son Katsutoshi was waiting for him. As Yamaguchi was walking at Mitsubishi shipyard around 8.15 a.m., the sound of a drone can be heard overhead. He looked at the sky and saw a bomber soaring over the city. Along its trail, the bomber drops a small object connected to a parachute. Yamaguchi was not familiar with what's about to come, but what happens next will haunt the rest of his life. All of a sudden, the whole sky erupted in a blaze of light. Fortunately, Yamaguchi was quick to protect himself by diving into a ditch before an ear-splitting boom rang out. The shock wave that accompanied the bomb sucked Yamaguchi from the ground, spun him in the air like a tornado, and sent him hurtling into a nearby potato patch. Yamaguchi fainted for a while, and when he opened his eyes, all he could see was darkness. His face and forearms had been badly burned, and both his eardrums were ruptured. The bright sky was covered by a cloud of thick dust and debris by the atomic blast blocking the morning sun almost completely. When he looked at his surroundings, all he could see was falling ashes. The place where he saw the bomb dropped, a monstrous fiery mushroom cloud, towered the sky. Yamaguchi wandered in a daze toward what remained of the Mitsubishi shipyard. There, he found two of his co-workers, both of whom had survived the blast. After spending a restless night in an air raid shelter, the men awoke on August 7th and made their way toward the train station, which they had heard was somehow still operating. The journey took them through a nightmarish landscape of Still flickering fires, shattered buildings, and charred and melted corpses lining the streets. Many of the city's bridges had been turned into twisted wreckage, and at one river crossing, Yamaguchi was forced to swim through a layer of floating dead bodies. Upon reaching the station, he boarded a train full of burned and bewildered passengers and settled in for the overnight ride to his hometown of Nagasaki. Sixteen hours after the explosion, people started to learn about the existence of the atom bomb in a speech by President Harry Truman. He said, It is a harnessing of the basic power of the universe. The force from which the sun draws its power has been loosed against those who brought war to the Far East. A B-29 bomber called the Enola Gay had taken off the Pacific island of Tinian and flown some 1,500 miles before detonating a bomb known as Little Boy in the skies over Hiroshima. The blast had immediately killed some 80,000 people and tens of thousands more would perish in the weeks that followed. Truman warned in his statement that if Japan did not surrender, it could expect a rain of ruin from the air, the like of which has never been seen on this earth. Yamaguchi arrived in Nagasaki early in the morning on August 8th and limped to the hospital. The doctor who treated him was a former school classmate, but the blackened burns on Yamaguchi's hands and face were so severe that the man did not recognize him at first. Similarly, when he returned home afterward, his mother couldn't recognize him and accused him of being a ghost. Despite the severe injury, Yamaguchi dragged himself out of bed on the morning of August 9th and reported for work at Mitsubishi's Nagasaki office. Around 11 a.m., he found himself in a meeting with a company director who demanded a full report on Hiroshima. The engineer recounted the scattered events of August 6, the blinding light, the deafening boom, but his superiors did not believe him. How could a single bomb destroy an entire city. Yamaguchi was trying to explain himself when all of a sudden, the landscape outside suddenly exploded 
with a familiar explosion. It was another iridescent white flash, and like the first time, Yamaguchi quickly dropped to the ground just seconds before the shockwave shattered the office windows and sent broken glass and debris careening through the room. The atom bomb that hit Nagasaki was even more powerful than the one dropped on Hiroshima, but as Yamaguchi would later learn, the city's hilly landscape and a reinforced stairwell had combined to muffle the blast inside the office. His bandages were blown off and he was hit by yet another surge of cancer-causing radiation, but he emerged relatively unhurt. For the second time in three days, he had had the misfortune of being within two miles of a nuclear explosion. After fleeing from the skeleton of the Mitsubishi building, Yamaguchi rushed through a bomb-ravaged Nagasaki to check on his wife and son. He feared the worst when he saw a section of his house had been reduced to rubble, but he soon found both had sustained only superficial injuries. His wife had been out looking for burn ointment for her husband, and when the explosion came, she and the baby had taken refuge in a tunnel. It was yet another strange twist of fate. If Yamaguchi had not been hurt at Hiroshima, his family might have been killed at Nagasaki. In the days that followed, Yamaguchi's double dose of radiation took its toll. His hair fell out, the wounds on his arms turned gangrenous, and he began vomiting incessantly. He was still languishing in a bomb shelter with his family on August 15th, when Japan's Emperor Hirohito announced the country's surrender in a radio broadcast. When Yamaguchi was asked about the decision to surrender, he said, I had no feeling about it. I was neither sorry nor glad. I was seriously ill with a fever, eating almost nothing, hardly even drinking. I thought that I was about to cross to the other side. Yet, unlike so many victims of radiation exposure, Yamaguchi slowly recovered and went on to live a relatively normal life. He served as a translator for the U.S. Armed Forces during their occupation of Japan and later taught school before resuming his engineering career at Mitsubishi. He and his wife even had two more children in the 1950s, both of them girls. Yamaguchi dealt with the horrific memories of Hiroshima and Nagasaki by writing poetry, but he avoided discussing his experiences publicly until the 2000s when he released a memoir and became part of the movement of the anti-atomic weapons. He later journeyed to New York in 2006 and spoke about nuclear disarmament before the United Nations. Having experienced atomic bombings twice and survived, it is my destiny to talk about it, he said in his speech. It is believed that some 165 people may have experienced both attacks, yet Yamaguchi was the only person officially recognized by the Japanese government as Niju Hibakusha, or Twice Bombed Person. He finally won the distinction in 2009, only a year before he died at the age of 93.